All right, we're looking at plays today. How many? Five plays. Stick around. Greetings and welcome back to another edition of Five Play Friday, the show where we take a look at plays, analyze the positioning of the crew, were they working the system, correct official make the correct call, crew communication, demeanor, all of the things so that we can get better as basketball officials. Greetings again, everybody. My name is Greg Austin with TheBetterOfficial.com. We craft video to help basketball officials get better and take control of their officiating career. If this is the video content you find valuable, it'd be a great time to do all the things. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. We live stream every Wednesday and Friday. We are always working to improve as basketball officials. Today we're looking at video because that's the number one way to improve, to look at plays, see plays, see crews, see positioning, see habits and fundamentals. When we analyze our game video, habits and fundamentals are what we are looking at. Are they positive habits? Are they positive fundamentals? Do the habits and fundamentals have room for improvement? Analyzing our own game video then, those are the things we're looking for so that we can get better as basketball officials. Now, obviously, we want to get plays correct, right? We analyze game video. Yes, we got that play right. Yes, we got that play right. Ah got it wrong, here's why, and then we analyze why. Why did we get it wrong? What were we looking at? Was the correct official looking at the right thing at the right time to get the call correct, right? These are the fundamentals of analyzing game video. Before we get started on the show today, allow me to thank our tremendous show supporters. Carl Chandler, Lewis Hessler, Mike Goodwin, Darwin Sonata, and Jordan Truppner. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show, there's always an opportunity down in the link in the show notes below. Okay, we're analyzing game video. Let's get started with our first video play. All right, here's that play. You know that one, a backcourt play. Chris Janish, South Dakota, submitted the play. Appreciate that, Chris. Awesome. It's all about the status of the player here, right? When the, when the team that in control here contacts the basketball, what is their status? If they have front court status and then go to the backcourt, we have a violation. But on this play, upon review, it appears, upon review that what we have is the, the defense was the last to touch in the front court. The offensive player gains backcourt status before they contact the ball. When they contact the ball, they have caused the ball to gain backcourt status, but what's missing then would be the absence of last to touch in the front court on this play. So by rule, this would appear to not be a backcourt violation and a call incorrect. A close one, right? We have to understand the status of that ball handler as key to evaluating this play. If the ball bounced on the line, it has backcourt status. If the player doesn't contact the ball until the ball, um, until they have backcourt status, oy, 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 close play. Yeah, we have to evaluate our position as the calling official on this play. Is there a guess involved? Yes, I think there is. 
Of course, our basketball rules expert this week, link above, covered backcourt rulings and the things that we have to evaluate when we consider backcourt plays. You can take a look at that, but let's move on now with another backcourt play and take from it what we will. All right. So just we've seen this play, right? Could we, you know, accurately describe exa if we had to make a ruling on this play and explain it, you know, kind of like the NBA guys, they go to the camera, they look at the video, they've made a ruling about a challenge and they make a ruling to the camera exactly what happened on this play, right? When did our ball handler gain front court status? Did the ball ever gain front court status? What are the factors on the play, right? This is a really challenging situation because there's a lot of variables in play. Our, our brain is just like whirring in analyzing all of the things. So let's look at this play on its merits and talk about the rules fundamentals, backcourt to front court, dribbler, what gives a player front court status? What gives a player back court status? What gives the ball status? Let's look at it on this play. Okay. So our ball handler is dribbling from back court to front court. When does the ball gain front court status by rule? With a dribbler moving from back court to front court, three points, both feet and the ball must gain, must bounce or contact the front court. And in the absence of that, the ball has not gained front court status. Does that occur on this play? Dribbler, dribbler, and then picks up the ball here. What is the status of the player when he picks up the ball? What gives the player that status? The, the player is contacting the back court when they terminate the dribble and put both hands on the ball. At that point, their dribble is terminated. They're no longer a dribbler. Moving backcourt to front court does not apply anymore, right? This is one of the challenges in adjudicating this play. But the ball becomes loose. They, don't, they, they uh, muff the ball. They fumble the ball. They do not gain control, control of the ball. The ball bounces in the backcourt. We had a player with front court status. Ball then has front backcourt, I'm sorry, player has backcourt status, right? Backcourt status. The ball then gets loose and bounces in the backcourt. Player in the front court. What is their status when they contact the ball? Right, let's take a look. There's so much to process on this play. When they contact the ball, are they in the front court? Are they contacting the ball here or not until they're where they're in the backcourt? And does that, is that a factor on the play? We're like, our brain is getting this stimulus constantly during this play, right? If the player contacted the ball and they had front court status here, the ball gains front court status. And then they step in the backcourt. It doesn't appear to be that's the case. But there's so much going on here for us to process, right? And this sort of highlights one of the facts about backcourt plays is they don't happen in an instant. It's not like a player stepping out of bounds. There's a lot of variables involved here. Status, 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 status. Dribbler, backcourt to frontcourt. Now this player has frontcourt status. Then the ball bounces in the backcourt. What's the player's status when they contact the ball? And, and evaluating all of these things against a fundamental formula, team control on the court, 
first to touch in the or last to touch in the front court, first to touch in the back court. Heavy, heavy processing on this play. In the end, I don't believe a violation has occurred on this play, and it is call correct. But it is, uh, we have to recognize it for what it is. It's got so many variables going on that it is super challenging and a really tough play to adjudicate. Thanks, Don Cash, for submitting that play. If you want to submit a play for analysis on Five Play Friday, I'll put a link on the screen and a link in the show notes below. Submit your play. Let's talk about it on the show. And I'll answer your question. All right. Thanks, Don, for that great play. But let's now move on to our next play. All right, here's that play. You know that one. Right. Thank you, Mike Connors, for sending me the clip. Um, this was a Facebook play posted by Alden Donston and caused so much consternation. Just amazing. Amazing. I'm going to move that down there. No, I'm not. Uh amazing that many officials see this play and they think that the batting of the ball by the player with front court status towards a teammate in the back court status was some sort of controlled tap or controlled pass or directionally uh, uh, infused batting of the ball, which in some fashion gives team control on this play. But on this play, the batting of the ball uh, does not establish player control and thus does not establish team control. If we rely on the rules book, the rules book defines what establishes player control, which, which w is what would establish team control in this scenario. Team control, or rather player control, is established when a player is holding or dribbling the basketball. This gives the ball, it gives the team player control, which then gives the team team control. To have a backcourt violation, we must have team control on the court. In on this play, we have an absence of team control until the player catches the ball in the backcourt. They have caught the basketball. They have established player control, which establishes team control on this play. Now, this play. Conf it, it, it causes confusion in the mind of many officials because this was clearly an intentional act by the player in the front court to bat the ball towards their teammate, right? And so since it's an intentional act, many infuse the, the player's actions by saying, well, this thus establishes control on the court, right? But there's a disconnect. The rule is clear. And when we try to uh, sort of take what our mindset is about this play and say, no, I'm making a judgment that a control was established by the player batting the ball because they did so in a controlled fashion, what we're doing is we're saying, I'm going to set aside what the rule actually is, and I'm going to let my sort of sense of the play override the rule. Common sense, as it were, right? <laughs> Right, but of course, this can get us into trouble on this play. So this is a legal play by rule because player control is not established until the ball is in the back court. It's a jump ball scenario as well, right? Are we ready as when we toss the ball up? Are we ready to adjudicate a tough play like this or a play that's potentially tough? Um, in the end, I don't think it is. But when we analyze our own game video, we're always looking for how ready was I at the jump opening tip to adjudicate the play. This crew got it correct. And we like getting calls correct. All right. An excellent play scenario to review. But let's move on now to our next play.
All right, a great clip. Let's take a look. We got a lot going on on this play. Get out of the way, Riff. Right, so we've got, what do we have? We have the screening action, right, off the top. We've got a ball handler, borderline legal, illegal ball handling, goes to the basket, pass and crash, double whistle, positioning of the crew, court with crazy lines, man. That's a lot of lines. Uh, I'm sure this is a venerable uh, 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 venue. Right, we've got habits and fundamentals to review on this play, right? When we analyze our game video, we're looking for call correct. We're looking for all of the things. We're looking for the positioning of the crew. We're looking for habits and fundamentals displayed. If I'm the center, what are my habits and fundamentals? If I'm the lead, what are my habits and fundamentals? Do, do I do what I would want to do on this play? Do we adjudicate the play correctly? These are the things we are looking at, and let's look at them now on this play. All right, transition play. Our center, recognizing uh, uh, possible screening action up high, has a very high C position, right? Um, is this a two official play, right? I mean, maybe we have a pregame that we want two, official play, uh, two officials officiating screening action on plays. If so, that's all, way, uh, that's all well and good here, right? We have contact uh, with the screening. The screener leans slightly, absorbs the contact with the torso, right? I would judge this as legal contact. The player does not have to be uh, vertical by rule on this play. In order to absorb this contact, they want to be strong for the uh, screening action. But then ultimately, our defender uh, trips over the extended leg. That is obvious on this play. This is illegal contact by rule. If, if we are going to say that this is a two official play, then we would want to get this play correct, right? That we've got, we've got four eyes on this play. This player is extending a leg. This is illegal contact by rule. We want to get that, right? But we're moving on. We have no call on that play. Let's judge the legality of the ball handler's dribbling. Right? Close. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more than a handshake. Right? A little bit, you know, just a little bit under the ball. Skilled ball handler. Right? No call on that play. That's the way it is. And then ultimately a pass and crash at the basket. This is a super close play, right? Does our def the ball handler leaves the floor really quickly, right? Is our defender legal? It is really close. Do they get that left foot down? That would be our judgment on this play. How about that? But in the end, both officials have a team control foul on the play. All right, habits and fundamentals by the calling officials. Again, our center is in a, a super high position as center on this play. And now they have the, the open look on the primary ball handler here. And they have that player all the way to the basket. But who is our primary defender on this play? And who is officiating that primary defender for a possible uh, push in the back? Who is officiating the player on the wing who's digging in and evaluating illegal contact on that play? And then ultimately, who is officiating the player who attempts to take the charge or player control, team control foul on this play, right? These are the things we have to understand is who is officiating whom. We can't say, okay, the center official has all three players, right? Any, any interpretation of your approach to an officiating system 
says that this play this this play this official is not responsible for officiating all three players in this instance right we're working as a crew we have to have crew responsibilities about who is officiating whom on a play and that's what we want to always evaluate with our game video are we working the system do we have discipline do we uh, display habits and fundamentals that reflect a discipline and understanding of the officiating system? Or are we putting a whistle on plays just as a reaction, right? Which we don't want, right? We want to work a system. So on this play, that secondary defender, uh, even though they're outside the lane, came from the Leeds primary coverage area. This would be the Leeds player to officiate here, right? And they should stay with the crash and allow the trail official to help on the, on the pass. We've got displacement. We've, we've got both officials indicating, right? Well, what, what's the discipline, the fundamental discipline we want as the outside official? Even if you put a whistle on this play is to not show early right? And that's what we have on this play. It's just like, no, uh, that's, I've got the call. We're going the other way, etc. If we had a large situation where the officials had different rulings on this play, we would be, uh, you know, in a predicament. So on this play, we've got illegal screening action here. Borderline ball handling action here. A double whistle when we shouldn't, and a display of, uh, and you know, an indication from the outside official of their call not recognizing the double whistle or having discipline on the play working the system. Right? So that's what we have on this play. A great play submitted by Chris Janish. Again, if you want to submit plays for Five Play Friday, there will be a link on the screen and a link in the show notes below. But before we move on from this play, we have to say, look at this fantastic clock. What the heck do we have going on here? That is tremendous. I do not, we need feedback from Chris on this venue that is some zany action. Zany. Three, the three, you know, the screen and the ball handler, right? Like, what's the intensity on the ball handling action? That's something we can look at as well. If, if we recognize what the trail is officiating on this play, what would we say the intensity of that on-ball matchup is, right? It's, get out of the way, ref. The intensity is, is you know, uh, above average, right? But this is not like a, uh, the defender is right up into them and there's going to be, um, you know, this doesn't allow the trail official on this play any opportunity to perceive the screen that's coming next. I don't think that's the case on this play. I don't know that uh, we, right, that the trail would not be able to officiate this play on its merits on their own. Right. This is no, no. I've got to go help on this play. Now we may have pre-gamed in, on this play. This is how we're going to handle the high screen. We want two officials, etc., on the play. We like that play. It gives us a chance to evaluate positioning of the crew, all of the things, crew discipline, habits, and fundamentals, and that's what it's all about when we analyze game video. Is getting plays right? Sure, that's one thing. Analyzing position, habits, fundamentals. Because these are the things that we can, if we improve our habits and fundamentals, then we've improved ourselves as basketball officials. If we make a, the correct adjudication about a play that we see in video, that's great. That's great that we have that understanding. But what's going to allow us to make those correct adjudications on the court is having the habits and fundamentals that put us in the right position to have all the information we need to make the calls. So the greater value that we could take 
as basketball officials, when we analyze game video, is analyzing the positioning, the habits, and fundamentals of the crew that put us in the right position at the right time to make the right call. Awesome. Let's move now to our next play scenario. All right, fantastic. A simple verticality play. Not a lot to it. Appreciate you submitting the play, Joe. Verticality, but we're looking again at the habits and fundamentals of the crew, positioning of the officials, etc. on this play. Right, play comes out of the trails primary, goes to the basket. Lead has secondary defender here, right? We're going to have communication between the crew potentially about who is officiating the ball handler on this play. Ball comes, this is the trail's primary coverage on this play. The trail has the primary coverage on the defender. It's close, right, to the, to the, to the lane line. The, the center official has nothing going on in their primary. They're certainly going to have an, an opinion about this play. We need to know whether there is any sort of push from behind. So it's important not for the, for the trail official here to officiate this play all the way to the end. We note that the center official would have a look on a potential push in the back on this play. But that's not what occurs. We've got a defender who establishes their position on the floor prior to the offensive player going airborne. This player is legal. The principles of verticality apply here. They are golden in their ability to elevate off the floor. They take contact. Are their arms completely vertical, right? Does it matter? No, not on this play because there's no arm contact. We have torso contact on the play. Legal. We have some displacement of the defensive player. Does this rise to the level of an offensive foul? No. No, it does not. These are play, just a players playing basketball, and we love it. We love legal defenders in our game, right? Now, we notice that on the rebounding action, both officials, outside officials, detach. Initially, it looks like it's going to be a clean rebound or a clean control by White right here, right, which sends our, a signal to our brain, okay, we're going the other way, but the ball is quickly lost. Notice that our trail official recognizes that and freezes. Excellent. That's what we want because we're going to continue to officiate the play from there. Don't love the position of the lead here with the uh, uh, with the uh, that body position of being uh, perpendicular to the end line, right? But has a great look at the play. No call, all is well, properly adjudicated on the play, right? Verticality plays, if we see that defender and their legality, they take contact, right? We love great defense, proper defense, verticality displayed, etc. We love strong players who are able to absorb the contact here. Everything's very clean and easy to adjudicate. But even on a simple play, we can analyze the habits and fundamentals of the crew so that we can get plays right when we take to the court. The center is working a little high, and there's really no reason to be on this play. Right? Right, that's like home base, could be improved. We note that our trail, the, the play is coming from, you know, near the division line. This always presents challenges. It's not like the ball has settled and we've had a couple of rotations, etc. right? The, the, the ball is leaving us, right, moves to improve, has a good look here, 
Good look here. Good look here, right? Way to stay with that play, right? Who's going to see any illegal contact here on the arm, on the rebounding action and that loose ball action? Our trail is, and we want to not detach. So I'd say that was good. And the reason the trail was high to begin with is understandable given where the play came from. All right, a simple verticality play. But we're looking for things. We're taking things. We're learning the positives that we could take from each and every play. Let's look at a bonus play. All right. Fantastic. So lots going on on this play for us to talk about, right? As working as a crew, call correct, habits, fundamentals. Again, that's what we're looking for when we analyze game video. Not you know, If there's a mistake made on the court, fantastic. I can learn from mistakes. I'm going to learn from my own mistakes when I make mistakes on the court. If I can learn from others' mistakes and watch them make mistakes, that way I can learn and not make the mistake myself. Right? That's a win-win. We like that. All right. Our trail, working very high, working onto the court here. Uh, where would we want our trail to be? Uh, right about where that fan in the, you know, the, the, am, the camera angle is where we, the look we would want on that play. But we are out of position to start, and that is just the way it is. Let's move on. Right, ball goes into the lane. Top, we're in the middle of the lane area here, and the ball goes to the center's primary coverage area. Right, that is clear. This is the center's primary coverage area. What do we expect? We expect a rotation may occur. We expect, as the trail official, that we may become the center official and we start moving down and moving away from that action so that we can find something else to officiate. That would be the habit that we'd want to display here. And the ball goes to the wing, right? So when the ball went to the center's primary, we would expect a close down by the lead. When the ball goes to the wing, we would expect a rotation by the lead. That would be the expectation on this play. We do have a player coming weak side. And now we have on ball action right in front of the center official. We've got a block charge scenario. And we've got a trail official who their first signal is block. Even before they put a fist up. Right? So you could analyze your game video and say, is that something I want, you know, to be, because what, it's an immediate response, right? It's a habitual response. Do I want that? You know, when I'm making a call, you could say a no, that that's a habit that I should try to eliminate and get that fist up first. Only good things can flow from having that fist up first on that play. Our center official has a whistle on the play as well and holds, right? Discipline, there's, there's really no opportunity to have a discussion, right? Because the only thing we're going to do here is go with a blarge. We're not going to come out and say, no, partner, that was my call. We're going to have a player control foul, right? If we have a difference in high school, a difference of opinion between the officials, 
right? The, bet, the only options here are block, which was signaled, or a large double foul, point of interruption, report both fouls, et cetera. We, there's no opportunity here to come out of this with a player control foul. We're going the other way, right? Once that, uh, that official who um, makes the preliminary signal. Hey, thanks for joining us today for Five Play Friday. Much appreciated. If this is the video content that you find valuable as a basketball official, liking, subscribing, and notifying would be the way to go so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Allow me to give thanks to our tremendous show supporters who help fuel the show. Carl Chandler, Lewis Hessler, Mike Goodwin, Darwin Sonata, and Jordan Trupner. Much appreciated and much love. You know there's going to be a link down below to help support the show, and I will put a link above as well. We have additional video content available here. I've made this selection. YouTube has made this selection, and now it's time for you to make your selection. Make your choice. Choose wisely, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.